Good morning, everybody. Uh, I would like to start, uh, like my colleagues, to uh, thank the organizers to uh, give us the opportunity to uh, present these results um, today dur during this workshop. Um, by um, any means, this is not only my work. Um, this, the work that's going to be uh, presented today uh, in this presentation is actually the result of um, a lot of efforts from a collaboration uh, between Jefferson Lab and the surrounding university, like Old Dominion University in Norfolk, um, Norfolk State University with uh, Professor Kangseo, as well as uh, the College William and Mary with Professor Lukachev and um, her PhD student, um, Douglas Bering, uh, Beranger. So this is the, uh, the outline of my uh, talk. First, you know, I'll uh, expose what um, approach we have, been, um, we have taken for uh, the, this program and uh, show you some results on uh, the niobium growth on sapphire as well as on MGO and on copper surface surfaces, both um, amorphous or oxidized surfaces and uh, crystalline surfaces. And uh, I'll finish with some concluding remarks. So um, this, um, this work has been uh, performed in the framework of, uh, of a grant uh, that um, uh, Chris has already mentioned earlier. Uh, it's, it's a three-year grant through DOE in the, the ARA uh, program, and in, as I said, uh, in the framework of a collaboration with surrounding university. Uh, so we, expl we are exploring two opportunities. The first one is to uh, engineer better niobium films, and the second one is uh, to produce uh, multi-layer structures based on the uh, SIS concept that was proposed by Alex Gorevich. And today, I'm only going to talk about uh, niobium films. So the idea is to grow and characterize niobium films with a control deposition energy and substrate temperature via electron cycloton resonance, or ACR, and also high power impulse magnetron sputtering uh, in, a, in the future. Um, the idea is also to monitor the in-situ the crystal character of the dependence of the substrate properties and the position parameter. And uh, one of the ideas that has been uh, proposed to DOE uh, in, the in the framework of this grant is actually to approach the film growth in three sequential phases. The first one would be to nucleate um, a film on the substrate, whatever it is, um, insulator or crystalline um, substrate. The second one would be to actually grow an appropriate template or an intermediate layer um, to uh, basically be able to, on the, as a third step, to deposit the final surface that is optimized for minimum defect density. And it's actually um, the surface that is going to be seen by the RF. So uh, basically what we want to do is to tailor for optimum RF performance. And for that, as it has been seen, uh, said um, you know, by se several speakers along this workshop, you need to um, do some measurement, of course, of uh, the resulting RF surface impedance and the superconducting properties of the film. And that's not enough. You need to understand why you have the properties, that you, the RF properties that you have. So that means that you have to carefully characterize the composition and the microstructures of the film, which implies a lot of material um, analysis. Um, so the, um, to connect the structure and the performance of the SRI surfaces, there's a lot of um, aspects that are involved and you need to uh, fully understand them to have a full control of your deposition process. For example, you have um, the chemistry of the involved species that um, can affect the quality of your film in terms of reactivity, as well as stoichiometry if you're dealing with compounds, for example. Um, also, uh, one of the parameters that play um, a lot of, um, a, a big role in the quality of your film is the uh, reaction process temperature. And of course, the, um, the substrate is a, uh, a, a crucial part of, uh, of the process and you need to um, definitely have a, a good knowledge of your, of your process in order to prepare it in, in a way that is uh, adequate for, um, for the, the, film, the, the properties of the film that you want to, uh, to achieve. So in this program, what we're doing is we're characterizing the, uh, the film surfaces in terms of material um, analysis uh, with different, um, different uh, methods. We are doing in situ uh, crystallographic structure and characterization at the College of William and Mary in a uh, UHV sputtering system with read and uh, also STM, scanning tunneling uh, microscopy. The um, large area crystallographic structure is being analyzed through XRD or X-ray diffraction. You also have, uh, we also use a lot electron bus catcher diffraction or ABSD 
which give you um, the 10 nanometer scale uh, crystallographic um, texture within uh, the 15, nanome 15 nanometers of the surface. For the topography, you use uh, stylus profilometry as well as AFM, or optical profilometry. And uh, down the line, we also look at the chemical composition of uh, the surface as well as the bulk of the material with uh, XPS and, um, and SIMS. And uh, for some of the, uh, the samples, the, the, the more characteristic samples, we also perform um, the structural cross-section of the film and uh, look at it with a TEM or uh, um, FIB uh, for QSTI-NP. So uh, some uh, simulations are also under development to um, understand how to connect the structure and the performance of SRF, SRF um, surfaces. And it's, um, in fact, uh, the, um, in the context of a, of a PhD thesis um, with uh, Daniel Bowring um, under uh, Larry Phillips at the lab it's to understand um, how the surface cell diffusion, the competitive grain growth, defect density, back sputtering, as we have heard earlier, uh, and preferential sputtering rates are effect, uh, affecting the roughness of the film, the defect density, etc. So, of course, we cannot do this work without doing any um, RF measurements. You have to uh, know, um, you know what the, uh, the RF properties of your film are. And for this, we are uh, using um, one of these instruments that we are using is the, um, sur the surface impedance uh, cavity that you uh, I've heard about with the talk of uh, Charlie Ries on the first day. It's a TOR and sapphire loaded uh, cylindrical niobium cavity that works at seven and a half um, gigahertz and of which we can um, do measurements of uh, the uh, surface impedance as a function of the magnetic field while varying the temperature from 1.9 Kelvin to 4.8 Kelvin. You can also do some uh, measurement of uh, the um, normal resistivity, the penetration depth, etc. And of course, we do use uh, TC and triple R measurements in um, uh, the DC uh, DC mode to uh, characterize um, films on um, insulator substrate. So the um, <coughs> we have seen all along the, um, the, the this this workshop that. Um, for the state of the art of the uh, of the coatings, um, they have been uh, afflicted by uh, some some diff, uh, problems that are due actually to the um, production method that is being used, um, notably uh, sputtering. So, um, with the higher energy deposition techniques, the crystalline defects and grain connectivity, the grain size may be improved uh, using a higher uh, substrate temperature. But also, as we've heard um, this morning, with uh, the lecture from um, Andre is that uh, you know by combining the uh, the temperature with uh, also um, the incident ion energy or kinetic energy, you're able to actually uh, achieve results that are comparable. And this is uh, some things that you're going to see that we have the indication that we can um, get there. So um, we are using oh, and one thing just for for clarity down the line. You can grow the films in different different structures. You have um, go from <coughs> amorphous to columnar growth with shadowing that is uh, usually a columnar, which is usually a characteristic of uh, spotted film. And you go into equiaxed uh, film, equiaxial films, which is usually the result of epitaxy. And uh, in, in between, you also have uh, what is called the abnormal grain growth, where you actually have uh, large grains that are um, that are growing in epitaxy, but you also have smaller grains that are trying, basically the, the material is trying to minimize its strain energy as well as the surface energy and the interface energy. And to achieve that, you need to have, um, in the context of the parameters for the coating, you basically have the material is growing smaller grains to accommodate um, the substrate. So to, um, do energetic condensation, we use uh, a method that is called electron cyclotron uh, resonance. And uh, basically the principle, I've, and you, it's not the first time that you're hearing about it, uh, this is uh, the system that we're using has been developed by uh, Genfer Wu in the context of his, uh, his uh, PhD thesis. And the principle is that you uh, create a neutral vapor of niobium and uh, you apply in this, uh, this cavity, you apply a magnetic field and uh, uh, an electric field that are perpendicular in order to um, accelerate the electrons to the cycloton resonance, and in return they will uh, ionize the, um, the neutral vapor 
that's incoming into the chamber. The um, samples are uh, mounted on this on this um, end flange at the end of the cavity, and uh, this the, the, this substrate um, holder is actually uh, where we can uh, apply a bias. So we have three essential components for uh, this um, this method for the generation of a plasma. Of course, you need the neutral vapor. The uh, you need the RF power for uh, the electric field as well as a magnetic field to uh, satisfy the cyclotron resonance. So why uh, choosing ACR? The advantage of ACR is that you don't need to have any working gas. Uh, you have, you can, uh, basically you're creating ions under high vacuum. So you don't, you reduce impurities that can be caused just by uh, the embedding of um, coating or working gas, like in, in sputtering, for example. Um, it has been measured for this uh, technique that you usually produce ions that are singly or quasi-singly charged. And you can control the deposition energy by applying a bias, which also um, you know, uh, ensure that you have a 90 degree uh, deposition flux onto your substrate. So the, um, the advantage, other advantage is also is that we have a big good, very good adhesion on the substrate and um, there is no production of uh, microparticle. So this is the, a picture of the system with the um, inside of the chamber. You have the E-beam gun, the coil, um, the waveguide, and this attached to uh, the ECR chamber. Um, this is a, uh, a setup that is at the College William and Mary, which is a UHV uh, deposition uh, system that is based on sputtering. And um, the advantage of this, um, this system is that it has an in-situ read and, and it will have an in-situ STM, which is very useful if you want to study epitaxy of uh, the na naivium or whatever film you're growing onto um, a substrate um, and see, for example, if you want to deposit on copper and you want to do epitax, it also allows you to see um, when you have completely reduced your oxide layer. So uh, we produce samples, a whole series of samples um, in, in one run. This is the samples before coating, after coating. Uh, and we produce them on different substrate, insulating with A-plane and C-plane sapphire, as well as um, magnesium oxide in the 100 orientation. We also have done marginally strontium titanate. And we also use metallic substrates uh, with a metallic surface or um, oxidized surface. And we have used single crystal um, copper in each orientation, as well as fine grain copper and large grain copper. For example, this disc over here is a large grain copper. It's basically um, a disc of copper that has been heat treated for at a thousand uh, degrees C on the vacuum for about 24 hours. So the typical uh, vacuum in, um, during the plasma at full power in this uh, system is uh, better than 510 to minus eight torr. Um, so that means you know, when we have uh, 14 kilowatt or between 10 and 14 kilowatt into the system. So 